Hey team, Mindy here. Hey, so we have Emily hopping on. Emily's from California and she is going to talk to us about the Pomodoro method, which I've heard only a little bit about actually just from her. She was doing a um, Insta story and was talking about it and I was like, whoa, this is exactly what I need in my life. So I reached out to Emily and I was like, hey Emily, would you tell me more? Um, better yet, would you come live on the team page and tell everybody about it because I'm sure that there's more than just Emily that wants to know all about it and she's just on. So Emily, if you can add yourself. Let's see if I can. Hey Ashley, hey Danielle. Okay Emily, I'm gonna go ahead and add you right now. Okay. Hey Mandy. So Emily's getting on here. Okay. Hi. It had hey. to change my phone direction. Let me readjust here. Hi. It's good to how officially you? meet you. I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Okay, well, there Emily, we go. Yeah, go ahead and tell us about... like this fall. <laughs> your, your kitchen's so cute. Thank you. <laughs> it's nice um, not having dust everywhere yeah. for a little bit. Have you done some spring cleaning? Well, yeah, we just finished, like, demolishing everything, so I think, like, just the mortar from the countertop, because we had tile, it was like this thick. And so right. the dust just went everywhere, and it's crazy. But I get a little reprieve. My husband starts the floors in two weeks, so. Wow. Wow, that's yeah. fun. It's super fun. It'll be great when it's all done. <laughs> yes. Well, cool. awesome. well, Emily, if you don't mind just going ahead and just telling us a little bit about you. I personally don't know Emily, because she's on Mandy's um, California line. But I have, to, I have friends that are on Facebook, so I see her here and there. But I was telling them earlier, I was on Instagram, because we're hitting Instagram really hard now. And I was watching your Insta stories, and you spoke right to my heart. I was like, girl, I need this in my life. So I reached out to Emily. I was like, Emily, tell me more. I was like, wait, better yet, like, let's go live and talk about it. And then you can tell everybody about it, because it's something that I know I could definitely use in my life. And it's just probably one of the hardest things in a direct sales company is managing your time. And not getting burned out because it's true. You can work as long and hard as you want, but it does. You've got to manage and balance your time. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So um, it's funny when you, when you posted or when you messaged me about this, I have just started taking this new little online course because I really am a huge proponent of like furthering yourself and continuing to learn and grow. Um, and so anyway – this kind of reintroduced this concept to me and that's what prompted me to do the live and share that with people because I've been kind of using it for a few years loosely. So it's called the Pomodoro Technique or Method. Well, you asked me to tell about myself. Do you want me to say anything yeah. else? Yeah, would you just, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I'm just like totally fast forwarding. No, we're, we're anxious to get started, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it is good. So um, my name's Emily. And um, I have been an artist with mascara since November. That's when I got my kit. And um, I love it. I love mascara. I also have a blog called therootedmom.com. And so um, I post little tidbits on Instagram all the time for that. And it just kind of works well together to kind of have those two businesses. But before I was working like this and being a mom, I have three kids. They're um, six, three, and one two boys and a girl. So the girl sandwich right in the middle. And um, obviously they keep me on my toes and it's kind of hard sometimes to structure like how to get my business stuff done with also being a present, fully present mom. Um, I, I think we all struggle with that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's perpetual. It's just a, a constant juggling act. But um, since I, I've started this business, I was in another um, direct sales company before Mascara, and I loved it. I loved the structure of um, multi-level marketing and stuff, um, and I think it just works well for moms, you know? I think it just suits our lives. Like, we can, we can function at a, at a deeper capacity and dive in and use different parts of our brain while still being there, being able to be at pickup and at drop off and wherever else we feel like we need to be. So anyway, I've always loved it. And before that I was in youth ministry. So I structured my own schedule. I didn't have traditional office hours. So I feel like there's always been like a need for me to create my own account accountability. And so anytime I can come up with a, a way to structure my time and energy that is really efficient 
um, but still flexible enough for me and for toddler tantrums or potty breaks or whatever is happening in that moment um, is, is a win-win, you know? So um, that's why I really liked this when I first heard about it a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, that course I'm taking, it's from Melissa Griffin. She's awesome. If you don't follow her, I'd highly recommend it. If you're trying to grow your Instagram or anything like that, she's fantastic. So um, I signed up for that course and it kind of like reminded me about the Pomodoro method technique, whatever the people call it, both things. And, um, you know, I, I still have been using it, but it just kind of lit that fire under me again to make sure that I'm following it more closely. <laughs> so um, that's a little bit about me and a little bit of my backstory. So anything else? <laughs> no, you're a doll. <laughs> You're too sweet, seriously. <laughs> okay, well let let's let's just dive right in. I'm excited. Okay. All right. So I didn't really know like the the history of the Pomodoro technique method. I always call it the method Pomodoro method. So that's what I'm gonna roll with. Um, but I looked it up, and it was created in the '80s. So it's not like been around forever, but it's it's a little bit of time under its belt by um, an Italian named Francesco Carrillo. And the reason why it's called Pomodoro method is because um, he used a little kitchen timer that was shaped like a tomato when he did it. And Pomodoro means tomato in Italian. So that's where the name came from. And um, it doesn't really mean anything like as far as the way it works. But um, just like 10,000 foot view real quick. The Pomodoro method is kind of doing work spurts and sectioning them off with breaks. So traditionally... How it's done is you do a 25 minute work first, you take a five minute rest. And when you're resting, you're not like, you know, just stopping the work you're doing. You need to get up, get a drink of water, go to the bathroom, do 20 squats, like whatever you need to do to kind of like get yourself out of whatever you're doing and working on and give your brain a break. So you're going to do 25 minutes of a work first, five minute break, 25 minute work first, five minute break. 25 minute work burst. So after you've done three of those, each of those little work bursts are called Pomodoros. So after three Pomodoros with two five minute breaks, you do one longer break. And depending on what you're reading, you're gonna see it like a 15 minute break to a 30 minute break. So somewhere in that time time frame. it also depends on what your schedule is like. So um, between 15 and 30 minutes, whatever works best for your schedule. Oh, good. Yeah, studying. It's really great for students. I think that's really what made it become popular. So um, you're going to do the longer break, and then you can repeat, and you just repeat it until your day is over. Um, the reason why it works so well, in my opinion, is that, first of all, it's customizable. So if 25 minutes isn't enough time and you feel that you can stay fully on task for longer periods of time, then do longer periods of time. You know, I regularly will do a 45 minute Pomodoro, like, because I'm like, I need to dive into this. And I, I know how my brain works. And once I get distracted, sometimes I need um, to bring myself back in. So um, it, it's harder for me to get back in. So depending on what the task is, if I know this is going to take me just a little bit longer, but it's not quite two full Pomodoros, and I'm going to do one 45 minute one, and then maybe I'll take a 10 minute break instead of a five. So you can kind of change things how you see fit. I also tend to do longer ones just because I'm getting more interruptions when my kids are awake. I do longer Pomodoros versus like after bedtime when I need to get some work done, I will stick to the 25 minute because I can get a lot done in 25 minutes without any distractions. So the customizable aspect of it, you're also recording what you do in your Pomodoros to increase your effic efficiency in the future. So, um, one thing that's really helpful is that um, you do see increased efficiency mm -hmm. because of the fact that you're recording everything and like how long it takes you to do certain tasks. So I don't know about you guys, but personally, just like toss a one up in the comments if you've ever done this, which everybody should. <laughs> um, have you ever thought, oh, that'll take me an hour and like four hours later, you're finished with whatever the task was, laundry or like a work project or whatever. It always ends up taking longer or you schedule more time and it ends up taking less. So this helps you track how long it actually takes you to complete a task when you're completely focused. So that's really helpful. Um, 
the other thing that I love about it is it's built in breaks. So you're not going to be going hard, getting focused. Cause like I said, I make longer ones sometimes, but I have a temptation to make them even longer. But then by the time I'm at like an hour of like 100,000% concentrated work, you're starting to kind of like drift, even if you don't realize it, you know, your brain can only stay at like a highly creative capacity for so long before you're going to start having either, if you're not decreasing in efficiency, you're act, you're decreasing in quality probably. So it builds in those breaks so that you can let your brain recharge um, and, and give yourself an opportunity to just breathe. So if you guys have any questions too, as I'm going along, go ahead and pop them in the comments and I'll answer them. <laughs> I have a question real quick. Yeah. So how do you track it? Is it through an app? Yeah. So, um, one way to track it is with an app. Um, traditionally the Pomodoro method does not, uh, uh, does not, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't know. Have you shouldn't phone. use technology necessarily. Yeah. So like I said, the guy named it after a little timer, um, that he used and it's best to use pen and paper. And one thing I wanted to bring up was I do have some apps to recommend. So if that really helps you to have something um, at your disposal all the time, or if you're on the go a lot, maybe you're like in the car, it might be helpful to have that. But um, one thing that just a little random side note has nothing to do with time management, but I know a lot of people that own their own businesses don't necessarily know this. If you were to be audited for your taxes and the only place you have your um, like what you're doing each day to quantify those write-offs that you have for your business is on your phone. The IRS can take your phone, can take your computer, whatever you have. Now, if you have a piece of paper, you can just say like, I have this little journal that I keep everything written in and I can take these notepads in and out and I could just hand them this and say, this is what I've been doing the last year. So you can actually just see what I've been working on, why I need to write off my internet usage or why I need to write off square footage in my home. Because you can see right here, I did somebody's makeup in my home or I had a party in my home. So I can write off square footage. I can write off pg and &E, I can write off my gas and stuff. So anyways, that helps if, if you are ever audited. <laughs> because I don't know about you guys, but I need my phone. I do not want to lose it. So that's really helpful for that. Um, the apps are great if you just want to use efficient, like just very quick efficiency stuff. Um, and I have a couple different ones that have different, um, sorry, getting like text right now, um, perks of using them. So I'll go over that in a minute if you want for sure. I can, I can do that right now. <laughs> I don't care. So, um, yeah, the best app that I liked was called Move On. And the reason why I liked it was because it's very simple. So there's not a lot of stuff to enter. You're not going to be wasting a lot of time writing down what you're doing. It's just start it. You can press up to make your Pomodoro longer. You can pull down to make it shorter and it automatically builds in the breaks for you. So that one was my favorite app if you're looking to do that. Um, another one that was really cool was this one called Focus. And it has like background music during your Pomodoros. So you can pick whether you're doing like a rest Pomodoro or whether you're doing um, a focus one. And when you're doing a focus one, you can choose like an ocean background or they have like a, a muse one, whatever you want to do to kind of help you stay focused. And you know when that music stops, it's rest time. So you don't even have to look at it. And I liked that, that component of it. It's nice to not have to look at your phone if you don't have to. Um, and flat tomato was one that is extremely detailed. So if you want to completely have all your stuff on your phone, I would suggest flat tomato. It's going to take a little more setup time, but it is, it has a lot of extra functionality, um, really good for keeping track of exactly what you're doing in each Pomodoro. So, uh, if you want everything electronic, I would highly recommend flat tomato. And then the other one was um, Focus Booster. And that one was also pretty customizable. So mm -hmm. one of those two would be the best two if you want everything on your phone. And if you're just looking for something that times it appropriately, I would go with Move On or Focus as the app of choice. But my favorite thing to do is honestly, because I can do it without touching my phone, is to just tell Siri to set a timer for mm -hmm. me. Or if I'm working on my computer, 
If you go on to google.com and just type in timer 25 minutes, it will automatically start a timer for you and just start buzzing when it's done. So that's really nice too. So those are my favorite ways to do that. Okay, Carly, you said I use a bullet journal. Explain that in text if you can. Yeah, definitely. Journal. Bullet journals are awesome. I really like that. So um, I, I was thinking about this when we were trying to talk um, about what, we, what I wanted to, to talk about here with you guys today. And one of the things I wanted to bring up that works really well with the Pomodoro method, if it's okay if I take like a little tangent, yeah, <laughs> is called the quadrant method. Um, so I don't know if any of you guys have heard of this, but I'm, I'm just learning about it in the last few weeks. Um, and I found it works really, really well with the Pomodoro method. So how it works is everything's broken down into four quadrants. You have the first one, which is necessity. Um, and that one's for like crises and things that cannot be done except for last minute. So uh, an example would be like, you know, you're getting things ready for Easter and there's a lot of things obviously that you can prep for Easter, right? You can get the turkey ready and brine beforehand. You can probably get some appetizers ready. But like putting ice in the ice chest if you're hosting Easter, you have to do that right before everybody gets there. So there are certain tasks when you're doing anything that you have to do right before. You can't, you can't prep, you know, five hours ahead of time or five weeks or five days or whatever. You have to do it at a certain time. Um, and then medical emergencies, stuff like that. That's all quadrant one, the necessity. It's stuff you can't move, sick kids, you're sick, stuff like that. And then the second one um, is where you should be spending most of your energy. And if you're functioning in that second quadrant for most of your Pomodoros, then you're going to find less and less is in the critical stage. You don't have to have so many necessities in life. Like you're getting ahead of your time. You're able to plan um, and prepare appropriately. So that second quadrant is called quality and personal leadership. So in that quadrant, you're going to find exercise, any personal development reading you're doing, your prayer time, um, any kind of planning or preparation with your calendar. So planning what exactly you're going to be doing in your Pomodoros, that's going to be in category two. And you might find that every couple of days you need a whole Pomodoro just to plan out what you're doing so that you're really efficient. You're just taking that 25 minutes to say, this is what I need to get done. And the more you do them, the more you track it and how long you know each task takes you, the quicker it becomes, you know what I mean? So it might take a little longer to begin, but then after you're tracking it for a while, it helps. And then you have your third one, which is deception. So we all have a billion things in this category, I think. Um, social media messages and stuff like that. Um, one thing I was thinking about was like, if you have downline people who keep asking you maybe about, um, what products are in stock, well, mascara offers a website for that. So if you're having th the same people asking about that, it seems like an urgent request, but really it's not, they should be accessing the resource that's already available to them. And so if you're spending a lot of time with things like that, that are, um, able to be delegated elsewhere. So in this case, you'd be delegating to the website. You'd be delegating to mascara itself because that's not something you need to do. You'd go to that website. So they could too. Um, but if you find yourself doing that a lot, you're probably spending too much time in that quadrant three and you need to be, um, moving into quad quadrant two. I need to educate all my team members about the resources that are already available to them. So, um, other things that might go in there, uh, if you have like a lot of family members who want, you, you're always having emails or text messages and you can kind of batch those a little bit, you know, instead of having to respond to them right away because it seems pressing, but it's not really, um, it can wait a couple hours and it's fine. And then the last one is like, you know, just spending too much time on social media. It's all the junk stuff in that last quadrant. Um, Netflix binging, <laughs> whatever your like distraction of the day is. So, you know, we all spend time in those categories, but one thing I wanted to bring up about that last category, the junk one is, um, responding to text messages, phone calls, direct messages on Instagram, messenger on Facebook. If you don't have time to respond and you're reading a message 
putting your phone down or walking away from it, doing something else, and then coming back and um, rereading that message, then that first time, that was junk because you didn't actually respond. You're wasting your time by having to reread that message twice. So it, it, you need to really look critically at what you're doing each day and decide which quadrant it falls into. And that helps you decide where your Pomodoro focus should be every day. So, yes, I love that. I love that. As you're talking, I'm like, guilty, guilty, guilty. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Definitely going to take all this in and, and do it. Um, yeah. So, again, I appreciate If anybody has any questions, let us know. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm, I'm not perfect at any of this stuff either, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. But I think 90% of the game is just not giving up, right? Just exactly. keep trying new things and – this will work for some people and it won't work for others. And that's okay. Well, and those of, those of us with young kids, it's like, okay, I can see myself doing this, but there's times that it's like kids are constantly needing your attention and they're number one. And so you just set Absolutely. it aside and you, until you have some time again, but mm -hmm. I really, really like this. this is cool. You might have it the only be able to do this kind of schedule for nap times or after bedtime early in the morning. So you know, I know early mornings for me, for example, do not work. Like my kids are up at five o'clock in the morning, so I'm not getting up before that. Like they're, they're early risers, but bedtime is, is money time for me. So mm -hmm. yeah, anyway. Okay. Well, good. Again, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment below. Thank you so much, Emily. This yeah. Was really thanks fun. for having me. Have a good day, you guys. Okay. Bye. Bye.